Welcome to our first fireside chat of 2022, developing the digital talent ecosystem at the intersection of business, technology, and innovation. I'm Jacqueline Brown, one of Seat's newest staff members. Firstly, I would like to take this time to acknowledge that we are meeting and gathered on the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which include the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising of the Siksika, Bakani, and Kainai First Nations, the Satina First Nation, the Stony Nakoda First Nation, and the Northwest Métis Region 3. SAIT is a technology hub disguised as a post-secondary institution. For over 100 years, we have been the makers, shapers, and originals, helping industry and students create a Calgary and Alberta that thrives. Whether you call us tech, polytechnic, SAIT, or Canada's best kept secret, one thing is for sure, tech is in our name and in our future. Now, before we get started, we do have a few quick housekeeping items to note. So firstly, if you hear the term SADT today, it's an acronym for the SAIT School for Advanced Digital Technology. Following this discussion, we will host a quick 10-minute Q&A period where the panel will take questions from the audience. Now, let's get back to the making and shaping a future for all of us. I would like to ask Dr. David Ross to get us started. Dr. David Ross is SAIT's president and CEO. Under Dr. Ross's leadership, SAIT has become Alberta's third largest post-secondary institution. President during SAIT's centennial in 2016, he has now launched the first strategic plan of the institution's second century, New World, New Thinking. Recently, Dr. Ross chaired the Alberta Skills for Jobs Task Force as the province adapts to new economic realities and develops the next generation of talent. Please help me to welcome Dr. David Ross to provide opening remarks. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Well, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us here this afternoon. It's so good to see so many of our partners from industry, from other institutions, from a wide variety of organizations represented here this afternoon. Now, it, it, it wasn't long ago that I announced the creation of, of the new school at SAIT that Jacqueline mentioned, the School for Advanced Digital Technology. And a, a really bold and I believe ambitious undertaking made possible by a $30 million gift from David Bissett. Now, David's vision uh, was certainly timely, and I believe very well aligned with state strategic direction, and more importantly, the response to what industry and what our, our partners have been looking for in terms of graduates for our institution. And, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Bissett wouldn't mind if I share a, perhaps a quote uh, from him when he announced when he announced the gift. He said, I had hoped that the concept of a school for advanced digital technology, it resonates with everyone in Alberta who aspires to see our great province attract and retain its best and brightest young people and lead Canada as a home for leading edge technology and a high standard of living. Now, I couldn't agree more, um, but understand even since then, a lot has happened. Uh, the, the pandemic, for example, certainly has accelerated the rise of, of the digital uh, digital economy, rather, uh, with few exceptions. Business has gone digital, and the, the pandemic has brought the need for digital adoption, I believe, to the forefront. It's go digital or, or go dark. Now, say you may be aware, it's not a newcomer to the world of technology. In fact, we've been leading the way in it applied technology education, as Jacqueline mentioned, for over 100 years. It's in our name. It really is in our DNA. And so as the world changes, and it's changed a lot in 100 years, um, and it's changed a tremendous amount in just the last 22 months, we must change too. In June 2020, I wrote a letter to Albertans. And let me share just a quick excerpt rather from, from that letter. Uh, the world has changed. The way we operate our businesses, the way we teach, and the way we learn are forever altered. The urgency and importance of the digital technology transformation that was underway pre-pandemic has been heightened. Our recovery will depend on a pipeline of adaptable, di digitally literate workers who are insatiably curious about what is possible. Now, at the same time, I also made a promise and I'll share that with you as well. All students in all programs at state, career launchers and career changers, those that are upskilling and those that are reskilling, 
will be equipped to thrive in a digital technology economy. And we embedded this promise in state's new strategic plan, new world, new thinking. Uh, now, we certainly intend to continue to deliver applied education in all programmings, whether it's accounting or pipe fitting or, or carpentry, but we are also committed to building the skills that our grads need to be successful, not just now, but well into the future. This means those programs will continue to evolve as required and, and meet the needs that industry looks for. So that our grads have the skills that can immediately make them successful as they enter their careers. So this means that programs will continue to evolve and much of which will be technology enabled. Our goal is to ensure state students have the digital literacy, personal agility, and entrepreneurial spirit to succeed in a future driven by people, uh, powered by technology. Now I'm gonna go a step further. Uh, this is a big deal. Our ambition is to supply 15,000 digitally prepared, skilled, job ready graduates to industry over the next five years. Now, we can't do that alone. We need to do it together in partnership with government, with all of our industry partners, with philanthropists, thought leaders, innovators, our faculty, our staff, our students, our alumni, all of you. Everyone can play a part and must play a part in writing this next, what I think, very important chapter. Together, we can reinvent and build a more resilient Alberta. I'm here today with my colleagues, Jim, Rainey, and Janet, to share our progress with you in establishing SAIT School for Advanced Digital Technology. It's a story that's still being written, but I assure you that we are poised and actively moving forward to address the needs of industry so industry can thrive in this new digital economy. And a thriving economy, as we all know, contributes to successful lives and successful careers, what we consider our in-game. So again, thank you for joining us here today, and I'm looking forward to listening along with all of you. Thanks. And thank you, Dr. Ross. Now for another quick introduction to my friend and colleague, Kevin Kowal. You may know him as one of our bright leaders at SAIT. Kevin is an associate director of the project office within our information technology services department. He is leading the charge on many, many very large digital transformation projects at SAIT. And if we're gonna talk the talk, we must walk the walk. All that, and he's fun to sit around the boardroom table with too. On that note, I will turn it over to Kevin to get our fireside chat underway. And I am so excited to be here today and chat with you guys. It's just one of those things where you're like, I got all that nice nervous energy and uh, we just, I love the fact that we just love all chatting about this topic. But before we get into that, uh, let's do a quick round of introductions. Uh, so tell me, you know, who you are, what you do, and maybe a book you've either read or is on your bookshelf or beside your bed uh, right now. Uh, Jim, let's start with you. Uh, excellent, Jim Gibson, Chief Catalyst with the School for Advanced Digital Technology. I have two gaming authors on my, on my desk table. One is fiction, one is nonfiction. Yeah, Chris Hatfield's Apollo Murders, great story, great fiction story, great writer. And then Mark Carney's uh, Balance book, who talks, talks about you know, the future of the digital economy from a uh, central bankers. Actually, really good reading. That would be fascinating, especially with all the DeFi and, and stuff yeah. arising out of that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Janet. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Janet Segato, the Dean with the School of Business here at SAIT. And the, the book that's keeping me up right now is Brene Brown's uh, latest work. It's called Atlas of the Heart. And uh, her, her series of books on courageous leadership is very impactful. And when I think about how technology is influencing our lives and our work. I think that importance of the human connection becomes so critically important. It is critically important. And, and what I, f I like about her work is it gives us a language um, and a, a framework to talk about our human connection amidst the technology. Yeah, I read her Dare to Lead book and yeah. I was hooked. That, that next one, one, the Atlas, is in my, uh, in my shopping cart. Good. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. nice. And you, Janet? Uh, Rainey, sorry. Courage to Lead. Love it. Um, so, my name is Dr. Rainey Wood. I am the honored leader and the dean for the School for Advanced Digital Technologies. Um, absolutely thrilled to be here today and 
what is on my bookshelf? I mean, what content isn't coming back at us these days, right? Having conversations with subject matter experts and all the different articles and publications that come into our inboxes on a regular basis. Um, interestingly enough, our, our leadership team is actually reading a book as, as a group mm -hmm. and we meet on a regular basis. And the book that we're reading is actually about world-class schools and it's called In Teachers We Trust. So halfway through the book, quite appreciating it and um, very intrigued to see what the outcome is and uh, how it applies to the work that we're going to be talking about today. Wow, In Teachers We Trust. It is. That's going on the wish list. class yeah. schools. Nice, that's great. Okay, let's jump right in. So to say 2021 was a busy year, I feel like I'm, I'm up for a, a, an understatement of the year award, um, <laughs> but it, it was, it was just like so full of change and it felt like Every other week we had to shift, pivot, adapt, throw in your buzzword here and, and figure things out. So um, from that perspective, let's start with you, Jim. What were some of the biggest changes or things that impacted both SADT and, and broader C? Um, great question. And, and I think I better reintroduce myself. Apparently my mic was in somebody else's pocket. So all good. <laughs> School for Advanced Digital Technology. That's, that's how we roll here, right? We just, we roll with things. Um, but I think 2021 was one of those years that we will all collectively think about as a, a transformational time, both in terms of our personal lives, how we cope with the pandemic. But, you know, I've observed the, the technology ecosystem for years now and, and I've been watching it, it slowly find its way. And then 2021 hit and it absolutely transformed. I, I've seen so much happen in the last 12 months. And SADT's response and SAIT's response to that has been really to pay attention to what is that new ecosystem doing? What are, we, what, what are some of the initiatives that our industry partners are, are looking for? What are our students trying to tell us about what the future looks like? So part of my role as chief catalyst is to do just that, to be a catalyst of you know, what's happening in industry, what's happening with our students, and what's happening with uh, policy and government and so forth as we all try and come to grips with the digital economy. So 2021 was one of those years I will never forget. Kind of mm. glad to see it in the rear view mirror, <laughs> but uh, I'm really looking forward to what's happening next. Yeah, so building on that, you know, like most organizations, we've, uh, we've moved to working virtually and learning in a hybrid environment, whether that's uh, online or back on campus. And uh, our faculty have just done an incredible job creating those applied learning experiences in a virtual world. And, and that's been really, really great to see. And we're now, we're now in a place where we have that opportunity to uh, develop the learning framework that we move forward with that will combine the best of the virtual learning experiences that, that we've, we've created and developed and bring those, um, you know, combine those with the face-to-face -face applied learning that SAID is known, known for. And I think there's an opportunity to think differently about face-to-face, -face, uh, what that means. It might mean that you're in the same classroom learning with uh, someone right beside you. It might mean that you're in a virtual um, environment learning with someone in a different time zone, but you can still have that face-to-face -face experience. Um, in 2021, recently, we made uh, some structure changes at, at SAID, and I, I want to take this opportunity to really welcome the uh, students and the faculty from our journalism diploma, from our library and information technology diploma, and our information and records management certificate that have moved from the former School of Information and Communications Technology into the School of Business, and I'm excited about that opportunity to, uh, to grow our programming in that space. And finally, uh, in 2021, uh, the School of Business at SAIT was recognized by CEO World as one of the top business schools in the world. So we were uh, we recognized at 52nd, um, only three Canadian schools on that list. And that's something I'm so incredibly proud of our faculty and staff, our students and our alumni who really have made that recognition pro uh, possible. Yeah, it's, it's so neat to even brag on your behalf, like I had something to do with it, just to be like, hey, did you hear about SAIT? You're, we're, we're in the top in the business, so that's very, very cool. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Randy? Oh, change, where do we begin, right? So, so not even just the students in the classroom, but the impact on industry's expectations, mm -hmm. right? So when our graduates go out to be able to work in a, in a workforce that is representative of both face-to-face -face and online, Right, so how, how do we develop those competencies along with the technical skills and the human, human factors? So 
yeah, so many, um, so many great opportunities, definitely challenges like you had mentioned, Jim, but um, very exciting for us uh, as we received a transformative gift that came from Mr. Bissett. And uh, with that, uh, IT, the information technology, now uh, along you know, with all of the stakeholders in the school are joining SADT. So we are absolutely thrilled to be one whole school. Uh, working together, uh, accelerating and advancing so many key priorities as we look to the future. So uh, training the talent and ensuring that those graduates are best ready to meet the workforce and, and knowing that we've got some very aspirational goals of upward of 15,000 graduates over the next five years. So exciting time for us. We really want to uh, continue to advance on our foundation and be seen as the, the leader, both Calgary and Alberta, but also too in Canada. So where do we begin? So much change. Right, and you think of all those stories, like we get so fired up by one story of a student or you impact one person's life mm -hmm. on, a, on, a, on a day and you're like, that was a good day. And you times that by 15,000, right? It's just it's sort of mind blowing the scale of, of impact we have here. So Why we do the work we do, right? right? Every yeah. day to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, with every crisis comes that opportunity, and that's exactly. where the joy is. Exactly. Yeah. So well, let's go there. Why? Why? Why did Saint make these big, big changes? Um, Janet, let's start with you. Yeah. So you know, for for a hundred years, Saint has answered the call to industry, making sure that our grads are are ready to meet the workforce needs, and that's something our our partnerships with industry are something we've always been very proud of. And as we move, or as we are in a digital economy, um, the workforce ready grad needs to have those human skills and the technology skills. Mm -hmm. And really, we need to set our structure up at SAIT to best uh, create that environment for, for that learning. And, and I really see the changes that we've made uh, will allow us to collaborate internally and more important to partner externally with, uh, with industries and uh, the community around us so that we can make sure that our grads are ready for the workforce needs of today and the workforce needs of tomorrow. Exactly. This is kind of where you've been like living for the past couple of years here within the city, isn't it, Jim? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things that, that we've noticed and, and working together with the, with the deans and the rest of state and actually the rest of the ecosystem is the speed at which new venture capital, is, for example, is coming in, into, into the city. So $350 million has hit this city in the last near term. What that's doing is fueling the need for talent all, all across the board. So when you ask, you know, why did we do what we do? Well, it's all now about speed and pace, mm -hmm. right? We have to now, as an institution, you know, David Ross threw the number, Rainey threw the number, 15,000 grads. That's, that's just in response to what's going on in the, in, in the, in the, in the ecosystem around us. That's the new, that's the new companies. But now we have a whole mm -hmm. industry of, of of energy and healthcare that is reimagining what their world's like that needs new talent as well. So we don't have time to, 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 to kind of think about this for too long. We need to get into the market, get busy, get moving. And that's what happens when we start working together. This is just one example of how the deans at SAIT work together. So we're, we're combining the schools and SADT. Janet Rainey and I work together all the time. The School of Construction, we're doing work with them. The School of Hospitality and Tourism. So we have to respond by being very agile within our own organization. So this, I, you know, when I look, when Randy and I talk about this, this is a bit of a test to see how quickly we can merge our groups, work together, get our programming up to speed, and be that constant, consistent voice with industry. And so it's a bit of a challenge. I feel like, I feel the gauntlet's thrown down, right? That 15,000, it's gonna be on a t-shirt somewhere, right? So, um, so that's, that's why I, that's, we have to move. We have to move quickly. Yeah, and on the ITS side, I can just appreciate that so much, the velocity and the variety at which this is happening certainly keeps us on our toes, yeah, for sure. So as, as new co-leads, uh, uh, Rainey and Jim of this, this SADT going forward, um, Jim, why were you really excited to work with, with Rainey? Oh, for a bunch, a bunch of reasons. She, she keeps me honest. That's, that's probably number one. <laughs> but no, but in, in all seriousness, I mean, one of the things, I'm, a, I'm an outsider to post-secondary. I come with the chief catalyst title and access to the crazy world of tech and entrepreneurship and venture. But, you know, at the end of the day, credentialed academics require discipline and they require foresight. They require um, thinking and work and, and experience. And, and 
Rainy not only brings that, but also brings a completely new network to my world. And so the combination of our worlds together and the networks that we hang out with is actually quite impressive. But most of all, it's about, it's about understanding the power of, of education and delivery of that to the student. Mm -hmm. So what Rain's taught me in the 20 years of her experiences, it, Jim, I, I know you get all excited about this stuff, but remember, it's actually what impact does that have on that day-to-day -day student? And she reminds me of that, and it's been wonderful for me as somebody coming from the outside. That's very true. It's, it's important for us, too, to, to have that connection into the deans to, to really remember why SAID exists, right? So how about you, Rainey? What's, what's got you excited about working with Jim? Well, it, it's very exciting, honestly. Um, we're partners. Uh, we, he calls us fellow journeyers, which I appreciate. It means a lot because we're starting down a new path, and that path starts today. And uh, Jim brings, you know, as the chief catalyst and a dean, we work together. He brings forward strength in his industry connections, right? As a venture builder, you know, an individual that's experienced uh, so many different aspects of the technology field. And, uh, you know, in addition to that, his, his commitment to the community, his commitment to make a difference and really evolve and support the growth in a place that he's committed to in the Calgary area. So we work really well together. And um, I, like you said, we keep each other honest. And <laughs> I always like to point the finger and say he's the troublemaker. But I think we both work together to do some great things. And it's about students and about industry success. Did John Lewis say good trouble? Yeah, good that's, right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's why we get along. That's, awesome. that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here we are, two years into you know the pandemic, when I think we initially shut down for a few weeks at the start, and I didn't even clean out space in my room for for an office. Um, how has that uh, impacted and changed the way we operate, um, both uh, within the the digital space and technology space and SADT, but but broader across uh, state programs and, and teaching and learning. Um, Janet, your take. Yeah, I mean, there's been so many lessons and so much learning uh, for us as educators, but for all of our communities and and society. And uh, you know, I think for me, what what's really been a highlight is the uh, the need for us to be adaptable. The need for us to make decisions in with uncertain information um, becomes really important for us, and really important for us to help our students get very comfortable with that as they uh, as they move out to their careers as well. And you know, just one example of the the partnership and the collaboration we've been able to to work on with the uh, formation of the School for Advanced Digital Technology. Um, 2021, we actually ran this program twice, but very early in 2021, we partnered with an organization called How to Change the World and created a pretty intensive learning experience for, for state students to work with students um, across the world from different post-secondaries to work with industry from, from uh, here in Calgary, but from other parts of, uh, of Canada as well. And uh, those students were put into an intensive learning environment where the industry challenges they were facing were uh, connected with the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. The, the students told us overwhelmingly that that was one of the most transformational educational experiences of their learning journey. And I think that's the power of being able to collaborate with, uh, with the School for Advanced Digital Technology. And, and I'm just ex so excited about doing more of those things and just creating those opportunities for our students um, outside the classroom and then bringing those experiences into their classrooms in a way that's just going to change how they think. How to change the world, indeed. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a very big undertaking, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right? <laughs> go big or go home. Right. What are you doing today? Uh, how to change the world. Yeah, learn how to change the world. Uh, that'd be great on the CV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so um, you know, I, I want to say that um, change is part of it, but, but I like the term evolution. And I think mm -hmm. evolution is important. Um, I want to recognize that, you know, we've got some expertise and experiences that have been long standing that uh, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge and, and build on. Right. I think the opportunity mm -hmm. here now is to broaden the breadth of work we're doing, to advance it, to accelerate it, but, but also to, you know, really to, to take a good look and go, you know, what, what is the right work? Uh, how are we contributing? And how are we contributing in ways that could uh, probably meet needs that we haven't done historically? Right. So uh, from my perspective, we're leaning in closer. 
we're working with our industry partners closer than we ever have um, and we meet with them more frequently because we know it's going to be a journey that starts now and, and it's going to take both industry students and our expertise mm -hmm. so building on that um, we're moving forward and we're moving forward strong at a pace that we've never seen before and looking forward to it it's only going to be exciting yeah, the depth and breadth of, of just knowledge and experience and, and skills, even just within the state community, never ceases to astound me. Mm -hmm. So true. You'll learn something from yep. students, faculty, people. Like, it's just, yeah, it's so awesome. So building on that out to, you know, that journey from, from students into industry and those connections in terms of, you know, their careers mm -hmm. after they graduate and move out. Um, how is SADT going to impact the, the careers of, of Albertans, Jim? I think you have to take a look at it from really three pers three perspectives. Um, there is the you know the, the the new recently graduated somebody somebody coming out of high school and they, they look and say mm -hmm. you know digital technology is is the way forward. So our programming has to be ready for that. We have to be ready for those very smart. But but those who are who who want to see a direct connection coming through their high school experience into a program and then into a, into a job that's relevant. So we need both ends. We need the pedagogy and the great training and the and the rapid the rapid iteration of what that means. But we also need the credibility in the employer side. So we need that connective mm -hmm. tissue into that. So that's the first group. Second group is the is the mid-career, somebody who's looking at their, at their CV, looking at their lives and saying, how can we do that? I just wanna give a shout out to our folks at, at our continuing ed group, our SEPs, our SEPs team, who put together five different boot camps around 18, you know, 14 week programs that, that help mid-career professionals rethink and maybe connect to a different kind of technology, right? And so we're on the credit side, we're on the programming side on that side, but our SEPS team steps up and puts together some boot camps in rapid fire and enables that mid-career person to test new things without having to go for two years. And then the final point, and I'll quickly just say, there's a third category that, that Rainey and Jan and I and all the deans think about is, is the group that we call the future disenfranchised. It's those people whose careers, they don't even see themselves in that future. They, we paint a future of possibility and entrepreneurship, but uh, we have to make sure that we don't leave them behind, right? And I know Janet and Rainey and I work really hard to think about what does that mean? So those, as I think about career, I think about those three things. Idea of the three domains, because I'm I'm kind of in the middle uh, with the career change and using SAPE. So um, I'm being told we're having some audio technical difficulties, mm -hmm. and so it speaks back to your point, Janet, on rapidly dealing with change yep. all the way up from you know UN solutions to global problems down to mics in 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 a call. <laughs> so uh, stay with us. We're we're figuring it out, and the, the fantastic folks in the back are working on it as we go forward. But we'll just keep going and uh, keep going across it. Um, so continuing this conversation and, and hoping that uh, everyone can, can stay with us, uh, what's the impact that um, we're going to have on, on industry around us in, in Calgary and, and Alberta? What do you think, Janet? Yeah, you know, State has 250,000 grads working here in Calgary, uh, in Alberta, across Canada and, and the world. And, and that's, you know, that, uh, that inspires me on a regular basis, uh, the, the individual stories of our graduates and their success and, you know, the impact that they're making on their organizations and, uh, and on their communities. We have graduates who are creating their own jobs and jobs for other Albertans because th through their entrepreneurial activity, they're starting businesses and they're, they're, uh, they're building in the economy in that way. And, uh, the, um, you know, you think about those individual graduate stories. We had a, a graduate reach out last fall to share with us uh, her excitement about a job offer that she had just accepted. And, uh, and this graduate was a student, uh, she'd finished a Bachelor of Business Administration with a financial services major and then a minor in energy, oil and gas. And she just accepted a role with a, an international asset management company. And, and what the hiring manager actually took the time to point out to her that it was the uniqueness, that depth of her um, education, uh, depth in business, and then that industry expertise in the energy space that really stood out to them. And I see so much opportunity for us to do more of that as our schools work together in the future. And it's interesting, Janet, just to jump in on, on one of the comments that was made earlier to me was, was what, is it that, what is it that we add to that portfolio of the students 
mm -hmm. resume? What is it that we add more than just a degree, but what are the experiences that they have that industry goes, that's a state grad. That's somebody that, that is, has touched things in a unique way. That's, I really pick up on, I'm learning a lot yeah. about how do, we, how do we add that to the, to the portfolio that they come out with. So, you know, I love that. Those well, are the numbers that, I'm, I'm a data geek, I work in IT, and so when I hear that kind of 250,000, yeah. that's the kind of thing that's just like, wow, that's amazing, and it mm -hmm. just adds to the 15,000 grads that, that we want to run mm -hmm. through, that, that number that you brought up earlier, Rainey. So, um, you know, what, what's your take on, on how we're impacting industry around us? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm building on both comments here. Um, you know, it, it's an impact, but honestly, it's, it's the collaboration of the impact. So bringing together all the stakeholders that Dr. Ross had mentioned and, you know, how do we uh, work with industry to have a, an impact on our local economy to ensure that our graduates are meeting that need. So from con program concept to design to implementation to delivery and, you know, what you're referencing, Jim, work integration, working right. with industry partners on real world solutioning through their programs in order to prepare them so that when they go out and into industry, they, they've got real examples that they can pull on to demonstrate how they are ready to meet the workforce needs, both now and, and forward looking, as we look over the edge, as Jim likes to say. <laughs> um, so, so for us, the partners, partners that we're looking to engage and that are really committed to advancing student success, but also to increasing their talent funnel, because we know that with the growth we're seeing and the announcements we're seeing, that our graduates um, really are going to be going into a market with so many opportunities and we need to make sure that they are best prepared. So that's why we're here, that's why we're doing the work that we do and that's why we do it every day is commitment to success for both our industry and student partners. Yeah, I like how you touched on work integrated learning there. That's such a, a critical topic right now. Mm -hmm. And on a personal note, it was one of the things that stood out, uh, that made SAIT stand out to my daughter, who was just a recent grad at SAIT, was that active applied learning and having that work integrated learning core front and center in, in the programming and the offering. It's, you know, why she chose that instead of the other options around us. So that's Hands on, right? Embedded oh, totally. in the work that we do, and it's yeah. what we do well and have done it for a long time. Yeah. So building on our strengths and our foundation. Yeah, absolutely. So how is SAIT taking and, and SADT taking the reins and showing leadership in the technology space specifically? Um, mm -hmm. Janet, what do you think? Yeah, you know, it's, it's an area we've, we've uh, had strength in for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we've, uh, we've always tried to bring the latest technology into our classrooms and, and make sure that our students could experience it. And, and even more importantly than, hey, I've used this program, but building that confidence in, I'm not afraid of technology, and we want our students to go out in the, into the workforce and be able to say, hmm, I haven't used this program, but I'll figure it out, um, to not be afraid of that. And that confidence comes from their experiences in the classroom. And you know that's only going to move quicker, as Jim spoke to earlier, that, that rate of uh, change, that the recognition that every job now is a technology job. Um, and, and you know, um, it, it spans across every career area. So when I think about, you know, specifically in, in business, whether that's ranging from our business students getting certified within their classes in Microsoft Office, or, you know, we've currently got a, an accounting faculty member who's got our students learning not their accounting skills, but actually their human skills, using mm -hmm. artificial intelligence to uh, develop their effective communication and their ability to persuade some pretty interesting things that, that the students are touching right in their classrooms. Well, that's one of the key things that we've even had to work on in the, in the tech industry is you can be really, really good at technology and, <laughs> and the ones and the zeros or the hardware or the whatever, but if you can't connect it, right? If you can't connect it to real meaningful outcomes or business or, or people. Translation. It, yeah. Yes. So, the yeah, people ab are at the heart of how the technology, how we all experience technology. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And that was one of the things that we did, um, and we worked together as well as, an, as, a, as a partnership, was working with an organization called the Digital Intelligence Institute out of Singapore. Right. And the DQ Institute is a global na standard around what does it mean to be a digital citizen? To Janet's point, is, is it's, it's fine to know the technologies, and we have great relationships with, with the technology vendors and the industry partners, but it's actually what, our, I think our secret sauce will be, what is it, how do we make that human? Mm 
How do we actually make great digital citizens who are, or look at the world, not just innovation of things, but innovation of ways. They actually challenge the status quo. They challenge the way we look at the world. But that, so that comes from a confidence of what it means to be a good citizen. So we're working really closely with some international standard organizations to try and do that stuff as well. So. And you've been at the nexus of this for <laughs> a long time and are going to be for a few years right? <laughs> at a rapid pace. Yes, right. <laughs> so, so your question is what's next and what's not, right? We, we've talked today about the acceleration. We've talked about programs um, from engagement of youth, um, you know, youth that are marginalized, that need support from uh, courses, you know, vendor partnerships, certificates, diplomas, post diplomas and degrees and most importantly, commitment to student success and yeah. collaboration. So our org structure is representative of our commitment to aligning with industry demands. And the second piece is the collaboration and the thought leadership that you see here today because we're committed to the journey and um, all for the same consistent reason, success of our students in industry. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to tag on that from the business side at all, Janet? Yeah, you know, I think we're just getting started in that collaboration and, and uh, you know, we've all talked about the need that we, we can't sit around for years and think about what this could look like. We need to, we need to dig in and, and try things. And just, uh, just a few examples of things we've done just in the last six months. Um, we've taken four courses from a, an already established IT certificate, in data analytics, and we've brought those courses into our business mm -hmm. degree as electives giving students that choice to, to learn that content and, and uh, study in that area. Um, Jim spoke earlier about our Center for Continuing Education and the boot camps, mm -hmm. and one of their boot camps they've stood up is in integrated machine learning. Well, we've been able to take just a module, a learning exactly. uh, module out of that mm -hmm. and bring it into a supply chain analytics course because the supply chain students need, they're not gonna be able to do the full boot camp within their degree, but they need that understanding of what's happening in their industry. Mm -hmm. And so those opportunities, we're just getting started and, and that's what really you know gets me excited to get up on Monday morning and say, what how do we move this forward and uh, you know as Rainey has pointed out so many times how do we make sure that students are at the front of that and the needs of our industry partners are, are part of that and all of our community and society is, is, uh, is, is benefiting from those opportunities. Our applied learning, our applied yeah. research, our work integration, right? Exactly. So, so much. Yes, and that's one of the things that's been a little bit astounding over the last couple of years is that there is just so much. Um, mm -hmm. So, but let's park that for a second, think just beyond the so much. So in, in a really short sentence or two, uh, speaking of the, the rapidly changing tech space, what's just beyond? Like what's just next? What, what do you think, Jim? Mm -hmm. um, the thing for me, is and I'll try and keep it, I'll keep it short because <laughs> you could go for it's hours. My story. <laughs> but but very the the phrase I use is the democrat the democratization of new technology. So what I mean by that is that you know AI and machine learning is a good example. Is that there are still great our friends up at U of A, they're doing great work in that stuff. But what we are looking for as we make it practical and 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 on the ground valuable is what we call democratization of some of the advanced technology. Low code, no code. The ability to build organizational technology very, very quickly so that we take it out of the, out of the esoteric and we bring it to the average person who can get big, big things happening um, and do it very quickly. So I, my, my one phrase is democratization of advanced technology and that's what I'm looking forward to. And I think you're gonna see that term and, and a lot of conversations around that become more ubiquitous, for sure. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Will you, Janet? Yeah, you know, and, and I really appreciate how Jim's framed that, and I think it's such an important reminder for all of us to be thinking about on a regular basis. And, and you know, one of the, the wonderful things about being on a campus surrounded by 18 to 25 year olds is, is those students want that sure. too. Mm -hmm. And they want to make sure that, you know, um, success for them, it brings success for everyone in their communities. And I, I think that's what's really exciting for me is, is us being able to uh, leverage so much of what we're doing in a way that is going to, you know, we talked earlier about how to change the world. Why not? Let's mm -hmm. have that impact on, on the world and let's start right here in Calgary. Just before Q&A period, Rainy, bring us home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's, uh, now, what, three sentences? Come on now. <laughs> oh, 
I'll give you four. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so always, you know, I work with a bunch of expert, you know, expertise of individuals that really live the field of technology. I'm always intrigued with the new items that come up, and blockchain and e-identity have been a couple of them that I've been watching. But but I'm going to narrow it in, and if I'm going to hang my hat on something, my comment would be you know, the, the convergence of technology and people. And one of the ones that I'm watching closely is artificial intelligence, you know, perfect example. Uh, computer sciences are uh, coming together with linguistics, I mean, and building on data analytics. So the ones that are bringing the fields closer together, the professions closer the than they've ever yeah. been. And, you know, a technology that is across all domains. So so for me, the ones that bring bring people closer together, really shift professions, but really bring the importance of the, the human power skills to the forefront because, you know, the applied technology is there, but how we translate, interpret, and, and also utilize really has the biggest impact. So, so many choices, and uh, hopefully that was only four sentences. <laughs> yeah, sum up everything in four sentences <laughs> right. or less, right? Oh, boy. How to change uh, the world. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much for the, the thoughts in the, in the chat today. Um, I know we could all talk for hours about this, but let's uh, go back to our final Q&A period. Uh, Jacqueline, what do we got? Thanks, Kevin. So our first question comes from Steve. He asks, does SAIT expect to address the digital business in different tracks for IT, such as big data, and real time, such as measurement and instrumentation? Oh. Okay, interesting. Does SAIT expect to address the digital business? So, so I, I can add some comments. Please. Do you want me to? So, so a absolutely. You know, um, I would say that that's a very all-encompassing or comprehensive question. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to tag on it probably a little bit more generically and say we are absolutely expanding the number of programs, the types of programs, and the pr type of content we're including in all of our programs across SAIT. Um, and fr from a, an SADT perspective, I'm going to tag that two areas that we're actually exploring right now is, is a degree in technology, and the second one is, is an artificial intelligence program. And I won't go any further than that. We've got a lot of exciting things underway, but uh, we don't want to let it all out today. Well, it does frame the question well, though. Sorry, Jim. No, I just, I just wanted to add that <laughs> there's a bunch more in Rainey's kit bag, I can assure you. Um, <laughs> But the, the other thing is that one of the things we've been working on very closely with the rest of the state is our collab vision, which is mm -hmm. our studios, which are going to be stood up to deal with some of the, some of the more rapid changing technologies like machine learning, um, big data, data analytics, XR, VR, and so forth inside something that we call our collab, which will enable work integrated learning, co industry collisions that will take, a, a, take these examples and move quickly through experiments. And, and bring some of our faculty together with the industry. So those, mm -hmm. that's, an, that's a more, that's a add on to that as well. I love that you used experiments there too, because it's a great way to look at it. And I look forward to trying to keep up with all of this. Uh, next question, Jacqueline. All right, Kevin, so our next question is from Tim. The question is, prospective students choose SAIT for its programming and the program's ties to industry. I'll suggest that students are seldom aware of the institutional organizational structure and even the school's <laughs> names. So what will this mean for restructuring on the ground and also for students? Mm -hmm. Janet, you want to take a crack at that one? Yeah, um, and I, I agree wholeheartedly with, with uh, with Tim, uh, students come to SAIT because they find the program that they want at SAIT, and more importantly, they're really, sorry, I dropped my sound thing, uh, they're, they're really attracted to our, our faculty experience, um, the small classrooms and that applied learning uh, opportunity. So really, our goal for students is for them to, to make sure that we have that organizational structure, and it might be in the background, but how are we making sure our organizational structure and what we're doing in the background is best setting them up for for success and creating that ability for us to uh, partner to bring faculty and students together from different programs. A lot of what we've talked about are those things that happen on the edges and it's the edges of our programming and that's the opportunity in front of us. It's not about students don't care what our structure looks like but we need to be set up to make sure that we can, we can uh, advance that learning in a way that is going to benefit our students and, and that's going to be our goal every day. Well, bring out the most value for them, right? In, yes. in the, the, the best way. And I would even add on and say it's, it's not just for the students, but even for new employees coming in. Mm -hmm. like, what is the breadth and depth of SAIT a, a, as a holistic entity, for sure? Yeah. Uh, another question, Jacqueline. 
All right, Kevin, so we have time for one final question. So this one comes from Brent, and he asks, it feels like the world carousel of evolution is spinning faster. Are we keeping up, or are we failing forward or falling forward? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I, all three of them are just like, oh, let me take this. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Let's no, no. Uh, it sounds like a tip of the spear question. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's a very good question. I think um, as, as, a, as a school responsible for the education of the future students, I want to come right back to the points both Janet and Rainey made, which is about the human element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that in the, if, if we're going to be failing if we don't remember that, that, that we, are, we are human beings first and that the technology will always change. I feel very strongly is, is that there's a new kind of conversation that we need to relight up um, because of actually the pandemic has caused us to, to, to think differently about how we engage. We've really, we've really challenged ourselves that way. And so I think we need to fix some things and it starts with human connections um, and, and the technology will be a, a, a support of that. Um, but I think, I think our commitment is to, to understanding the human element of how we thrive in a digital world. That, I think it, that, that drives me, it's what gets me out of bed. Um, and I know having talked and, and gotten to know Janet and Rainey really well, I know that drives them. So um, we're gonna commit, we're committed to that. Closing quick remarks on that one. Yeah, I think I think Jim has has perfectly expressed that, and 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 I, you know, the words popping into my head as he was we speaking is thoughtful mm -hmm. and purposeful, and and that's something that all of us need to make sure we're making time for. You have to make time for what matters. You can't wait for that time to to. Uh, so if you feel like you're on that hamster wheel or carousel as it's been described, find time to step back, make the human connection, and think about how you step forward again. Mm -hmm. Last word. Final comment. Yeah. Uh, and absolutely, it will be an evolution. And there'll be times that we'll be moving forward. There's mm -hmm. going to be times that technology advances and changes. And we will fall forward. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but the reality is, is that we need to keep moving and we need to keep looking forward and, and learning as we progress. So it will be an evolution and it'll be an exciting one. I love it. Back to you, Jacqueline. Wow, Kevin, that was such a whirlwind. <laughs> School looks different these days, and even for me. But Kevin, what was your favorite part of the conversation today? Oh, just one? Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I, I love this idea of human connection, and it's probably because I work in IT, and so the IT side might be a little easier or a little more comfortable for me, but uh, remembering that it's all about the people and that tech without yeah. people doesn't do anything or mean anything. Uh, so I love, you know, what, what everyone said about connecting it back to either, you know, students or faculty or programs or industry or graduates or careers. It's, it's, it's all about the people. Absolutely, Kevin. It's a big task in front of us, addressing the talent shortages and industry transformation. It's incredibly exciting and with so much to do, I guess we should get started. So who's in? We really hope everyone joining us today is in, because together we want to create a resilient Calgary and Alberta to call home and celebrate, a place that thrives, attracts and keeps young people like me and those to come here, a place that creates opportunity. We're going to be reaching out over the next few weeks and months to ask you to join us as we build our new schools, new programs and new future. We hope you will join us. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Be kind and take care. And thanks to everyone at home for attending and taking time out of your busy day to learn more about SAIT's digital transformation. Today's conversation truly highlights why tech is not just an industry or a school, it is everywhere in everything we do. If you'd like to learn more, please visit sate.ca slash digital and subscribe to our newsletter for the latest news and events happening at the School for Advanced Digital Technology. You can also contact the SADT team by sending an email to sadt.info at sate.ca. We hope you'll join us as we build a better way of teaching, learning, and working with industry. Take care.